Hello and welcome everyone. This is Dr. Tim Liptrap and we are here in our finance class. We're looking at our long-term financial planning and growth chapter. We are looking at a problem set that's in regards to external financing. And we've been given a problem and we have to build a pro forma income statement, the pro forma balance sheet, we have a taxable income number, and what we're being asked to do is look at our dividend that was paid this year and keep it constant going into the next year. The problem says that the assets and costs are proportional to sales, which means is that they're just kind of based on a percentage. Debt and equity are not proportional to those sales. A dividend of 3400 was paid and the company wishes to maintain a constant payout ratio going into the next year. Next year's sales are projected to be at 32085 And then the question is, is how much money do we need in order to make that same amount of payout along with the sales number that we have? So let's talk about some interest, the, the numbers that we've been given. So we've been given a pro forma income statement with sales at $30,000, cost at $19,100. Then it brings into the EBIT or taxable income of $10,900. That's just subtracted. It's just a subtracted number there. We have a taxable or taxes at 40%. So basically what we did was we take D11. I'm just using the block D11 times 0 0.40. It's a tax number. And then our net income is 6540. That's what we have. We were given an asset number of 6700. We were given a debt number of 29,000. An equity number of 38,000. And that which gave us a total of 67,000, which is the same thing as our asset goes to equal. In order to solve this problem, we need to figure out what the percentage of growth is going to be. So we know that our sales are projected to be 32085 32, So I'm going to put that into a second performer that I've created down below. Basically, I just copied and pasted it. Now I'm putting in some numbers in here. So now that number is 6.95%. This is what I did. I took the 32085 I subtracted out 30,000. So then I divided it by the original number. So what that gives me is a percentage of growth. Our percentage of growth is, is 6.95%. So our costs are going to be similar to that. 6.9, they're going to be the same. So we're going to take the 19,100 and I'm going to multiply it by the 0 0.0695 and now my costs, I'm sorry, you can see I made a mistake there. I need to put the one in front of that. So it gives me the real number. So our costs are going to be 20,427.45. We're going to subtract that out, and that is our taxable income of 11657.55. Our taxable income is at 40%, and that's just a calculation that I carried above. And our net income is 6994.53. Our assets are 67,000. So we're going to do this equal our assets 67,000 times 1.0695. So our, our total assets go up to 71,657. Now we have a difference in here. You can see this is that we have a difference of, of 71,657 and our total over here is 70,358. We've got to figure out how to make that difference work. As we continue with the problem, the payout ratio is constant. So the dividends paid this year is the payout ratio from last year's net income. So what that means is if we paid a certain percentage out, we need to keep that certain percentage. So how do we figure that out? So let's head back up to our dividend line. Our dividend line is 3,400. 
Where did we get that number from? That came right from the problem set of 3,400. So we took that over the 6540. That was what we paid out net income last year. That gives us a percentage. And to keep it consistent, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by this year's net income. And that's 699453. You can see that number right there. So how, this is how the equation looks. If you were to make this a little bigger here so you can see this, let me grab this. So if I'm coming here, here's the equation. 3400 divided by 6540 times D24, which is that net income. So which gives me a number 363630. Now what we need to do is we say, okay, retain earnings. And that's the amount of money that we've kept. So we're looking at our net income here of 6994. And we're going to pay out dividends. So that's leaving the bank account. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract those two numbers. And so what I did was I just took this net income number. I subtracted it from, by this. And it gave me 3358.23. So if you want to see that, I took this number here, subtracted it by this number on the dividends that we factored out. And that gave us the new retained earnings. Well, the equity, remember what equity is. Equity is the amount of money that we have. So we have $38,000 to start last year. We're now adding back the money from retained earnings, the money that we earned, of $33,58.23. We're just adding that back into the bank account. Now we've got a number of $41,358.23. Now what you can see here is I just added that back in here. That's just they just is equal to each other. So that's how I do that. But the problem is, is that these two totals don't agree. So now we need to add some more money back into the account to make these things work. So this is what we're looking for, the EFN, in which is called the, how much external financing that we, do we need. So I took the $77,050. That was $77,050. Hold on a moment. I had a typo there. I just want to correct that. So what I did was I took the 71,657. That number is this number right here. It's in the pro forma. It's the total asset number. And I subtracted the total from the liabilities and equities, which gives me a difference. So you can see how this works. So I take this number, subtract it from this number, and it gives me a number of one thousand two hundred ninety eight dollars and twenty seven cents and that is what my EFN is that is the answer to this problem as you work through this my suggestion is that you always use an Excel spreadsheet develop it like I did your life will become a lot easier as you're going through this